Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we're doing illustrative math, grade 8, unit 2, lesson number 12. Okay, our first question here says select all the points that are on the line through 0, 5, and 2, 8. So, if we go through 0, 5, and 2, 8, what is our line going to look like? Let's quickly figure out the equation of this line, because that's what I like to do. I'm a math teacher. I love figuring out the equational lines. So, our slope is, well, we go from changing y from 5 to 8 is 3. From 0 to 2 is 2. So our slope is 3 over 2, or 1 and a half. 3 over 2x plus, where do we cross the y-axis? Hey, that's right here. Plus 5. So our first one, a, 4, plug it into the x. 1 and a half times 4 is 6 plus 5, 6 plus 5 is 11. A works, B, 5 times 1 and a half is 7 and a half, plus 5, 7 and a half plus 5, that's way more than 10. That doesn't work. 6 times 1 and a half is... half of six is three, so one and a half would be nine. Nine plus five is 14. That works. Ooh, big numbers, big numbers, big numbers. Okay, 30 times one and a half is, half of 30 is 15, so 45. 45 then add 5, 45 plus 5, ooh, that's 50. That one works. Half of 40 is 20. So 40 times 1 and a half is 60. Plus 5, well, 60 plus 5 isn't 60. That doesn't even make sense. Go away. So A, C, and D are the three that work. Okay, what have we got next here? All three points displayed are on the line. Find an equation relating x and y. So first I want to find out our slope. Slope is rise over run from 3 to 9. That's 6, or we'd count those boxes. 3 to 6. Our run goes from 3 to 6, which is 3. So our slope is 6 over 3, which is 6 divided by 3. Quick, quick. That's 2. Um, so our slope is 2. Now... What's our y-intercept going to be? Where are we going to cross that y-axis? Well, if we're at 3, 3, if we go back 1, we'd be at an x of 2. And if our slope is 2, we're going to go down 2. So that's 1. If we go back 1 more, this would be an x of 1. This graph isn't very friendly. x of 1 y of negative 1, because we'd go down 2. Go back one more to give us an x of 0, and we'd be down to negative 3. So we cross the y-axis at negative 3. Other way we can do this is our change in x over change in y 
Let's look at this nice little triangle here. We know the ratio of sides has to be our slope, which is two. And we know that slope is the change in y's over the change in x's. Find the change we subtract to get from this nice point here, whatever y is, subtract this y value, which is three. And to get to whatever this x is, to get to that, that's three. So that's two different ways to get the equation of this line. Either of those equations work, they should be equivalent to each other. Ooh, nice new triangle. Here's triangle ABC. Draw a dilation of triangle ABC with a center of two zero and a scale factor of two. So our center is at A, point A won't move. Point B is three units away, scale factor of two, it's gonna be six units away. From A to C, we went up one over three. To double it, we're gonna go up two over six. How well can I draw this? Okay, done. Draw dilation of triangle ABC with a center of two zero, same center, scale factor of three. Point A still doesn't move. This three units with a scale factor of three becomes nine units. Okay, now, up one over three will become up three over nine. Hey, Mr. Boskin, be better at art. Done. Oop, scale factor of one half. Scale factors less than one, that means we're getting smaller. Center's still the same. Three units will become one and a half units. Up one over three will be up one over one and a half. Okay, ooh. What are the coordinates of point C when triangle ABC is dilated with a center of two and a scale factor of S? Center of two, scale factor of S. So we want point C. Our original point C was at five, one. Our new point C with a scale factor of two was, scale factor two was the red one. That's the point eight, two. C prime when we had a scale factor of three was at Eleven three C prime when we had a scale factor of one half was three point five point five. So C prime when we have a scale factor of s well what happens well our y value is always just what s is right 
Scale factor two, S was two. Scale factor three, the Y value was three. Scale factor of one half. So our Y value is just going to be S, whatever our scale factor is. Now for this, what did we do? Scale factor was two. We got eight. Did we multiply it by four? Three times four is 12. A half times four is two. So we don't just multiply it by a half. What do we do? What if we... Well, let's think. We've been doing lots of stuff with slope. Maybe the slope of this is going to matter. All these triangles have the same slope. They all go up one over three. That would be a slope of one third. Do we think that slope is going to show up in here? I bet it might. So if we had a scale factor of two, two times a third, Hmm. Scale factor of three, three times a third is one. Ooh, that's not really working. Let's think about reciprocals. What's the reciprocal of one third? Because we're looking at the x coordinate. That would be three. The reciprocal of one third is three over one, which is just three. Two times three is six. Ooh. Scale factor of two times three is six, but we needed eight. Three times a scale factor of three is a nine, but we got an 11. A half with a scale factor of three, half of three is one and a half, and we got three and a half. Ooh, those are all two off. Oh, and what a coincidence. We started out two units from the origin. So it is three times our scale factor plus two. Three times the scale factor plus two is our x coordinate, and our scale factor is the y coordinate. Write an equation for the line containing all possible images of point C. Well, what was our slope? We know our slope was one third. Y equals, I'm gonna move this slightly so we got space. Slope is one third. Where do we cross the y axis? Well, on this line, if we go, we need to go back two. And if we go back two, we go down one third every time. So we go down one third here, we go down another third here. So that would be two thirds below the nice little zero where we started. Go away, plus sign. There's our equation of a line. Y equals one third X minus two thirds. Here are some line segments. Ooh, look at all these pretty line segments. Which is a dilation of BC using A as the center of dilation and a scale factor of two thirds? BC, scale factor of two thirds, that's less than one. It's gotta be the one that's smaller. That's gotta be FH. Which segment is the dilation of BC? A is the center and a scale factor of three over two. So we need one and a half times bigger. 
Ooh, that's going to be this one. G, J. Which one's not a dilation? Well, that's going to be D, E. Because D, E looks to me like it's at a different angle. Bad. Different angle. Doesn't work. Hey, Mr. Boskin, actually show what you're working on. Who decided to make this so that you were doing your work behind your head? DE. Doesn't work. Okay, that's the last one. This has been another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.